All right, well, the financials led by PSU banks have seen outsized returns over the past year, but uh, some of them have started to correct now in the last fortnight or so. To discuss how the next year is likely to look, we're joined by Saurabh Kumar, Executive Director, India Banks and Financial Research at JP Morgan. Saurabh, welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us and greetings of the season. Uh, this has been a rollicking ride for financials, but do you think the run on PSU banks is done or do you see further upsides uh, both on the price as well as on the earnings front. Okay, uh, thank you for having me on the show and uh, happy new year to you and your viewers. Uh, on PSU banks, we believe that there is still upside left. Uh, these stocks are coming up after almost a 10 year downturn. And if you look at broadly, at least the two frontline PSUs are already hitting normalized ROAs. We are seeing positive earnings revision for them. And this is a market where basically both credit cost is generally low across the board, especially in corporate assets, which is very good for PSU banks. And there is, in some sense, uh, a fight for deposits, which again is positive for PSU banks because these are deposit-rich entities. And we are seeing the growth differential, the ROE differential narrow between PSU banks and private banks. That should mean that over a period of time, valuation differential will also narrow. Uh, so we continue to remain positive on the public sector uh, banks as a space, there will be volatility, mm. but generally we think the earnings traction here is positive. Mm. Mm. Saurabh, hi, good morning. Uh, Prashant here. Now, can they, you know, Thanks. I looked at uh, one year forward the price to book multiples for these PSU banks last week, uh, and uh, the, most of them are basically back at, yeah. uh, or not most, I mean, there were two which I found which still had some distance to cover to get back to their previous peak multiples. Well, there was PNB and uh, there was one more. But yeah. uh, four or five of these names were already there or even past uh, the uh, previous peaks. Uh, is this uh, a much better posit positive cycle? How much <clears throat> should we rely on these past multiples as a guide to future returns? So, I, uh, so in our, on our assumptions, we are not back to peak. Uh, for SBI and BOB, we are probably back to averages. Uh, peak is obviously uh, quite some time away. And uh, remember that when you're comparing peak price to book multiples, uh, at least there is a subsidiary discussion which need a uh, subsidiary valuation which needs to be taken out at SBI. So, if you're just for all that, I don't think we have we have probably gone back to averages. And, you, and then from that average, if you look at actually the trading average between 2010 to 15 or 2002 to 15, take out the asset quality cycle in the middle, uh, which happened 2016 onwards, then I think there is still some gap to go. Also, if you look at forward earnings, uh, I think most of the market is looking at 0 0.8, 0 0.9% ROAs for most of these banks, uh, whereas uh, uh, at least the two frontline names are already delivering 1%. There is, there is scope for margin upside. So we should hopefully see maybe ROAs also kind of peak out at maybe 1.1, 1.2% 1, 1. 1. Le levels. So you have both scope for both earnings upside and multiples have not gone back to peak levels yet. At least for the two frontline, we are back to averages. But again, if you adjust the averages, take out the asset quality problem from 2016 to 20, uh, there is still some distance to go to cover that ground as well. Saurabh, uh, morning, Reema here. Uh, do you think this PSU up cycle, this bull run that we're currently seeing in the PSU banking stocks last for longer than, say, six months, nine months? Do you think once the valuations catch up to their peak levels, and the catch up is happening at a very fast pace, the kind of valuation re-rating we've already seen since September, do you think we are in for a two-year, three-year, five-year kind of an up cycle in PSU banks, or it's going to be very short-lived? And your thoughts on it? Because you know, if you look at the last, the trend for the fa last five years, ten years, PSU banks have hardly created wealth. The PSU Nifty Banking Index is only up six percent in the last five years. Yeah, so uh, I won't be able to comment on five years. Obviously, we need to watch these stocks. They give you higher volatility. Uh, but end of the day, what matters for a bank stock in India is book value compounding. Uh, for a PSU bank, this is just a function of the ROE. So effectively, these guys are able to compound, if deliver sustainable ROEs of 14, 15 percent, then there is, at least from a valuation point of view, upside left. I would, however, agree that this year you've had higher credit growth, uh, which has helped PSU banks. That will probably tail off into next year as both credit growth moderates and effectively, uh, and the growth moderates at a slightly higher pace for PSU banks. So, uh, but end of the day, the ROE, which is about 14 to 6, 15 percent for most of these banks, we think if that sustains, then uh, you will get your, uh, you know, uh, mid-teen kind of returns at some of the PSU banks, even when the valuations catch up to fair levels. Mm. Okay. 
Uh, let's come to uh, now private financials, and I want to start one uh, start with a actually a non-banking yeah. name. Uh, b b sorry, do you cover Bajaj Finance? Yes, I do. Uh, you know, this is one of the few years where Bajaj Finance actually will be, uh, if it ends here, down for the year. Uh, could you, uh, what's your rating on the yeah. name, and uh, you know, uh, how, how do you see prospects for that uh, for that name going into 2023? So, uh, we have a overweight on the name. Uh, for Bajaj Finance, what has mattered is, uh, unlike banks, this stock has almost fully correlated to uh, loan growth or AUM growth, as we uh, call it. Uh, and we think that in the next three years, if this company can compound at 30%, uh, which will be one of the highest loan growths in the sector, at least of all major private banks and NBFCs, we won't be negative uh, on this name, simply because the growth and the ROE differential is pretty high. Uh, Bajaj versus the rest of the sector. The second piece is effectively, this is you, I, I would say, inter, for, for a major NBFC or a major financial, where we are, we are very positive on basically the digitization or the uh, Bajaj mall, Bajaj app that they're, uh, they're launching. I think if they're able to create value out of that closed loop ecosystem that Bajaj is implementing, uh, then I think uh, the, uh, the multiple scan up shift uh, it, can, it is already trading between a bank and a fintech, and we don't see, unless we see the traction on, them, on that piece roll down, uh, if the current traction, what we are monitoring in terms of monthly average users, the, new, the downloads, the app, uh, app store rating, both on Play Store and uh, on iOS, that, that doesn't seem to uh, indicate any negative momentum for us. Mm. Okay, I'm glad you talked about uh, uh, valuations, right? Because uh, the issue with some of these private sector banks, I mean, ICICI Bank, for example, of course, steady growth, steady profitability and all that. But I'm trying to understand whether there is any valuation upside because ICICI Bank is now trading at, what, three times price to book as per September of uh, this year. Um, do you think that there is enough in the growth for it to sort of move to a new paradigm as far as valuations are concerned? So I would agree on the private banks that maybe there is not much left on valuations. You will just get the book value growth from here on. If you look at ICIS's valuation, it is almost fully caught up with HDFC uh, Bank. Uh, historically, ICIS had a valuation discount versus HDFC. Now that gap is pretty much over. So from where on, we just expect uh, that ICIS should deliver a very steady ROA of around 1.92% and compound its book value uh, again at that 16, 17% odd level. And that should be your return. I don't think one can argue for value re-rating uh, from here on, especially when cost of equity continues to be very high. Okay, sort of. We leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in and uh, you know speaking about the banks as well as the way forward, both for PSU as well as private. Despite the rally that we've seen in PSU banks, JP Morgan says that there could be more on the upside. And, uh, you know, that's a sector that they like. By the way, for the market, the mid-cap index has given up all of its gains. So don't lose sight of that. The index is now well in the red. It's very typical to what we've seen in the last many days. We start off with a bang and then we lose all of our gains. A lot of stocks under pressure and especially in the banking pack, whether it's Union Bank, Dhanlakshmi, Punjab and Sindh Bank, a lot of these names are down anywhere between 3 to 4 odd percent. South Indian Bank is down as well, IDBI Bank too. So this entire lot is coming off a little bit. And sugar is a space that is under a bit of pressure, not so sweet perhaps today. But the speciality restaurants will be raising 127 crores through the issue of warrants. The warrants will be issued to investors who aren't promoters. So after the conversion, the promoter stake will drop to 46.5% from the current 52.5%. To discuss this, we're joined by Anjan Chatterjee, um, the chairman and managing director.